Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing and initial setup for the iConnect Training PT201 Building Automation Training Simulator. So if you're like me, the very first thing you want to get into is the actual unit. And so it comes in a really robust plastic case. So in this case, this unit is very portable. It can be traveled with, it can be brought to different training facilities. Um, it can be wall mounted, uh, mounted on a desk, bench top, um, or kind of just set up in its case. So that's a first look at the actual unit. Let's see what else is in the box. We have our ethernet cable to connect the unit to a laptop or desktop. Power cord, connect the unit to the wall. What's included with the PT201 is some pre-wired leads with banana plugs already on them, and then some extra banana plugs which we'll get into in a little bit. The next thing is the instruction manual and then a USB flash drive. Now on this flash drive is the instruction manual. So you have a hard copy and a digital copy. So everything that's in this is on the flash drive. On the flash drive, there's gonna be some additional software and information. So you're gonna have the software to install Sedona application editor, the BAS backup, BAS emulator, and various other components. There's also the teacher instruction manual and then the student workbook, which is the hard copy. The last item in the box is these two little brackets. These brackets are to help mount the unit, so I'll show you a picture of that here. To begin with the wiring unit, the first thing we're going to do is open these plug leads and the extra banana plug ends. The included lead sets are 36 inches in length, so we want to cut these into 12 inch sections. So I'm going to do that now. You can go from the beginning of the banana plug to roughly 12 inches. Then we'll flip it over again from the beginning of the banana plug to roughly 12 inches. So now we have two ends. This is going to plug into the unit and this is going to wire to the controller which we'll get into in a little bit. So we've cut all of our leads down to 12 inches. So we have a banana plug on one side and then the other side is just a cut wire at this point. We're now going to put the PT201 back on the table and pull the connectors off of the controller to get those wired up. So to get the connectors off the controller, it's pretty simple. And take a screwdriver, get behind the connector and just kind of pry it off. And I'll zoom in so you can see that again. So if you can see that on the camera, there's these little prongs. Each input and output is gonna be two prongs, right? A common and a hot. And they just push on and pull off. In the level one curriculum, we're not using every input and output on the controller. So you don't necessarily have to pull off every connector off the controller. We're just gonna be pulling off the ones that we need. So here you can see the point list. We're connecting T1 to universal input 1, R1 universal input 2, R2 to universal input 3. And you can see there's no universal input number 4 needed for curriculum 1. So we've pulled off all the connectors that we're going to use and now let's get into the wiring. So with the leads cut, now we're going to wire them to the controller. And so you can see that these don't have a polarity that you need to follow, um, where when you see black and red, then you need to follow polarity. And you're gonna see on the controller that you have A and C. C is common, A is either DC plus or AC high. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have one color for the first device. So T1, I'm gonna use yellow banana plugs. You could use blue or green or white. 
I'm going to save the black and reds for anything that needs to be polarity observed. So we're going to take one of our leads and strip roughly an eighth inch, maybe a quarter inch to go into the connector. We're going to twist the wire, get it a little bit tighter, put it into the connector and then tighten it. So I'll zoom in so you can see that a little bit closer. So again, we're going to strip roughly an eighth inch off, tighten the wire by twisting it, putting it into the connector and tightening. So there's our first connection. So you can see the bottom of the connection. There's really not a lot of copper sticking out. And that's good because you don't want any chance of these crossing over and short circuiting. So we just slide it onto the controller. And plug it in. So there is universal input one all done. If you're going to be wiring this and you're going to keep it um, wired and not be taking these off, you can cut this to the exact length. Um, this is the 12 inch leads that we cut down. So if you cut this one down to maybe six inches, it would kind of give you a tighter configuration. But again, if you're going to be disconnecting these and either unscrewing these or pulling them off, um, and you potentially could use them for different ones, right? Like if we use them over here, these are going to be universal input three. Again, you might need these shorter or longer. So the 12 inch leads will get you anywhere on this unit to plug into the applicable spot on the controller. We can go ahead and connect R2 to universal input three. So you can see we're keeping the same color per input or output and I think it looks a little neater that way and you can really configure it. Next step is S1, S2, S3. So these three switches are going to be binary input 1, 2, and 3. So we'll get those wired up. One thing that's nice about the controller is that all the inputs and outputs are short circuit protected and over voltage up to 24 volts protected. So let's say you're wiring up the connector and you have one strand that crosses over to the other side. So you're short circuiting A to C. It's not going to burn out or ruin the controller. And that's a really good feature. Um, obviously you want your connections as tight and as neat as possible, but if by chance there is a short, just know that the inputs and outputs are protected. So that's a nice feature that's built in. So we've completed all the top devices. Those are all connected to the controller. Now we can start to work on the bottom devices here. If you notice, these all observe polarity. There's a black and red post. And we wanna follow that. So the black is going to be our common, which is on the controller labeled as a C. And if you see on the controller, way over here, it says DC common or AC low. And so the red is going to be our AC high or DC plus. And on the controller, that's labeled as A for the input and outputs. So for the black banana plugs, I've wired up our first unit. We're going to want a banana plug on both sides for three of them. I'll do the next one here. We'll take the plug. And these little screws, we'll drop one in the top, screw it down a thread or two. That's just so it doesn't fall out if we tip it up. We're going to strip about a quarter inch, twist the copper, make it a little bit tight, insert it into the side, and tighten down. So there you go. I'll zoom in so you can see that a little bit closer. So we're going to take the plug, 
drop the little tiny screw into the top, screw it down a thread or two, that way it doesn't fall out. We're going to strip our wire roughly a quarter inch, twist the copper so it stays tight. Now one thing to note on the connector, if you strip too much copper, you're going to have a lot of copper sticking out. You don't really want that because then it can touch the other side, short circuit, um, just doesn't look as clean. With the banana plugs, you're not as worried because there's all that space to hide the excess copper that's stripped. So we're going to insert it, tighten down, and there you go. Now what's nice about these banana plugs is they are stackable. So either side is stackable. The banana plugs that we added are stackable, as well as the factory ones. Now one thing that I've noticed is on the factory versus the extra, the plug is a little bit longer on the factory side. And so if you're gonna stack them, I would recommend keeping factory to factory and the extra ones to the extra ones. So we have our black leads made up for these lights. We're going to connect the black to the 24 volt AC black or common. We're going to do that for all the lights. And again, since they're stackable, just plug it in like that. Again, one thing to note is when you stack them like this, the case will not close. So don't try or you will break the banana plugs. So for the high side or the red, we're going to be tying right into the controller. If we had just plugged a banana plug lead from here to here, then it would always be on. This light would be on 24 seven because it'd be getting a constant voltage. If we wire the red into the controller, then the configuration inside the controller is going to tell the lights when to turn on. Now we can connect the red from each light to the binary output of the controller. So we're using binary output one, two, and three for the green, yellow, and red LED. Now the binary outputs are normally open relay contacts. So you're not gonna see the AC on the controller, instead you're gonna see AB. We're gonna connect the red banana plug lead to the B on the binary output. So in the same way that you connected the connector for the leads up top, we're gonna to be doing the same thing. We're gonna be stripping about an eighth inch and connecting to the connector. We do wanna note that we're connecting to the B side, so make sure on your connector that you're using the proper screw hole. So with those wired, we can connect the lights to the controller. Green light is binary output one. Yellow light or light number two is binary output two. The last light gonna be binary output three. Now we can connect the voltmeter. So you can see the bottom of the connection. There's really not a lot of copper sticking out. So there you have it, the PT201 unboxing and initial wiring for the level one curriculum. Thanks for watching everyone.